Hello everyone. Today I would take, like to take a look at the ArcGIS Indoors workflow called Generate Pathways. And we want to take a look at this here today and we'll kind of walk through the steps here of what's needed to accomplish this. So first of all, uh, we need to create the required layers. Um, and this can be done by uh, going through the process of the ArcGIS Indoors uh, geoprocessing tools and creating the indoors geodatabase is a first requirement. Um, you have to create these uh, feature classes here. We have levels, facilities, sections, units, details are some of the key ones that we'll be looking at uh, that you'll need for the generate pathways. So your data can be imported from CAD uh, using the floor plans to indoors tool or it can be generated from 3D scan data as well. You want to, before we begin here, um, first of all, you want to make sure you have the proper uh, feature classes added in. So in this case, to generate pathways, we're going to need uh, preliminary pathways as well as uh, preliminary transitions. We want to add those into our map. And we want to check for proper attribute information. This is really important. Um, your, your attribute information in facilities uh, in particular, something very important to look at is the level ID, uh, facility ID, first of all, is important. And then we go to levels. We want to make sure our uh, level IDs are specified. And I'm using sections in this case. It's optional uh, to use sections. And then um, in each one of these feature classes as well, you see that it's site, facility, and level are all called out in these and same with units and uh, as well as details. So it's really important to make sure your level IDs are matching in each of these feature classes as well as you need to be certain uh, to check for a unit ID to be populated as well as detail IDs. It's going to be used in both of these feature classes to generate pathways. Uh, something else to keep in mind, um, the indoors database uh, needs to be kept in its original form. So be very cautious about adding any additional fields. Um, if you run this tool and it throws an error, a lot of times it's uh, it could be due to a schema change that you made. Uh, so just something to always be aware of and check for. So uh, again, I've got preliminary pathways here and I'm going to hit, go ahead and go through the uh, generate pathways tool. First of all, I have to be logged into my indoors portal. Uh, have to be licensed and uh, logged into a portal that has the licensing for indoors. Otherwise, the tool uh, will not work because it requires that indoors license to work. I'm going to specify my input workspace and then with my uh, detail type field, I'm going to specify use type. And in this case, I've got um, some CAD specific uh, fields are under my use type. We've got some CAD specific uh, attributes that I specify. These are the areas that um, I don't want my uh, pathways to be generated at. So we would take a look at some of these here. We'll just kind of zoom in. Um, so like for example, uh, walls and areas here that I want my pathways to be broken at these locations. This is where I'm specifying my barriers within my details layer. <clears throat> and then network density. Uh, this is something that I typically leave at the default of 0 0.6 meters. And then under units, I have a unit type. I can specify certain units as restricted. And in this case, what I've done, I wanted to restrict stairways. So I didn't want the stairway to be populated with my uh, pathways. So that's why I specified that here under restrict unit types. Then uh, filter by facility. In this case, in my example, I've got a couple facilities here. Uh, they're kind of attached to each other. Um, and so I can specify those here and filter by facility. And then I can filter by level. So in this case, I've already ran level two that you can see here. I'm going to specify level one for this next process that I'm going to run. And we'll go ahead and start the process and we'll let that run and then we'll come back to you. Okay, so our tool finished here and it took two and a half minutes. 
um, and we can see that it uh, did create our uh, our data for our level one. I can turn on my uh, level filtering, and of course I have the, uh, the two levels there with that information specified. If I open up my attribute table, preliminary pathways, then uh, what I probably would want to do in this case is um, specify a from and to height. Uh, that way I can be able to filter and then also I'll need to do that in order to view my pathways in 3D, which is helpful when you go to create transitions and we'll cover that in another video. So. Uh, thanks for watching today. Appreciate it. Best of luck with uh, your generating pathways and your ArcJS indoors workflows.